Let's talk about a move that, that you made with Ducati years ago to enter a different segment with first the Diavel and then the X Diavel. How is that going for, for you in terms of sales? I mean, it's a very positive development for the brand because actually our brand with Ducati is about sporty and performance, but it's very interesting to deploy this character to bike which is like a more cruiser or naked, big naked. So this bike like the Diavel, which is a muscle bike, uh, can be very performant, but also comfortable uh, for everyday usability, but especially as a bold character. So actually you can use the bike being downtown, not only through corner, and actually it's expanding uh, the possibility to be excited for a Ducati, so it's very positive. Well, even bolder now, you've expanded the engine displacement from 1200 cubic centimeters to 1260. What else have you done with this bike? Uh, basically, this is the second generation of the Avel, and uh, it's carrying uh, all the development that have gone uh, through the most recent years, so in terms of electronics uh, and vehicle dynamics. Uh, so more important of everything uh, is the, the drivability improvement that you got with uh, the engine with the variable valve timing, uh, which actually is already used in the Multistrada and the X-Diavel, uh, and now it's already in the Diavel. So the engine is very smooth, uh, a lot of torque, uh, and actually you can enjoy even without uh, using the gear shift uh, too much through corner. How, how much can you bring technology from racing, for which Ducati is so famous, to retail? I mean, you've got the fastest bike in MotoGP, you've just won the first three races in a row of World Superbike. How much can you uh, translate that technology from the track to the street? Oh, I appreciate so much this question because I think that our brand, uh, most strong characteristic is exactly like that. I think that there are very few or no other brand which have so direct link uh, between uh, the proper factory racing bike and the bike we are selling uh, to our customer. Take the Panigale R. Uh, not only is the most powerful super bike you can actually own, uh, but uh, for example, the traction control software is something we develop in-house uh, and it's exactly the same algorithm that our technicians, our software engineer, write for the MotoGP. Uh, actually, there is where the performance is. So that's one. Second point is, for example, aerodynamics. Uh, the V4R uh, is uh, characterized by using a strong uh, component like uh, the wings, uh, in which you get more load on the front. Uh, and we, as Ducati, started uh, as pioneer having the wings in MotoGP. The bore of the engine is 81 millimeter, exactly like one of the racing engine. So our V4, it's a real replica of what you got uh, for MotoGP taking into production. So there is a lot, especially in the sports bike. Now you brought the wings into Superbike. Alvaro Batista has won uh, every race so far this season. Um, are you confident that he can win the whole championship? Yeah, it's only the first race. Uh, so we have to be calm and uh, behave like uh, if we just have to start the championship. Uh, the bike is pretty new. Uh, there are still many areas of the bike that need to be improved. We have competitors uh, like uh, the current championship, Johnny Ria, which is very strong. Uh, the bike uh, is very uh, developed. Uh, so uh, we have to see another track. So the start is very good, but still it's very much too early. Can you uh, bring this technology to the larger group, Volkswagen, um, and Audi are trying to improve efficiencies, work together, but of course they're car makers. Can Ducati help contribute to what they are doing or can they help contribute to what you're doing? Yeah, the exchange of technology is uh, always possible. I think our most possible contribution is our experience uh, in developing in a lean way production vehicle uh, that they have not to sell in million of vehicles. When you have to sell in million of vehicles, they are unbeatable. But we are a very good experience when you have to develop uh, without uh, too much capex uh, a vehicle that you have to sell maybe in 5,000 units. Uh, there we have a lot of experience, uh, as we have a lot of experience when you have to make a uh, light component uh, and performance product. Uh, so there there is for sure uh, something that we can offer to the group and on the other side we are learning every day from their technology and laboratories. I know Volkswagen, um has previously used a Ducati engine and a prototype of a hybrid car. Can you see that kind of thing um, happening in the future? Yeah, that's very much covered uh, by our secret, uh, uh, but everything is possible.
Speaking of secrets, I noticed on the Pikes Peak roster, um, Carlin Dunn's entry says prototype, not multi-strata, which is usually the winner of the Pikes Peak race. Are we going to see a new bike at the, at the race this year? Uh, prototype means prototype. So by definition, there will be a new bike. Uh, then stay tuned uh, and uh, look for the race. Uh, we are preparing something special. All right, so you're not going to tell me about that. Let me finally ask you about the trade situation. The U.S. obviously is a huge market for Ducati and a lot of other car makers at this show are concerned about EU and U.S. trade relationships. What does it mean to you? Yeah, of course we are a small manufacturer based in Italy and actually uh, only around 10% of our production is sold in Italy and uh, the rest of 90% is sold worldwide. So actually we are very much into uh, actually being able to develop our brand uh, if we can leverage the whole world. Uh, and uh, this leveraging uh, is possible if you have free circulation of the goods. Uh, uh, some area of the planet are already actually more difficult like Asia. And uh, uh, we really would uh, look for a future in which uh, uh, the trade barriers uh, are less everywhere in the world. So we are uh, in favor of not having distinction. So every time should be a balanced approach. Uh, so uh, what is unfair normally if you have a country in which you have trade barrier in entering but are not uh, barrier in exiting from the country. And so in this, I think the uh, US is doing a development uh, and we would look for a future in which instead of adding new barriers, we remove the ones that are existing.